Good evening and welcome to the 8 o'clock news. I'm Sophie and with us this evening we have Ewan Allen, an archive worker from the Royal Geographical Society. He is with us today to explore the legacy of William Morris Davis, the man behind the cycle of erosion theory, in light of the 85th anniversary of his death next year. Thank you, Sophie. Yeah, born in Philadelphia in 1850, Davis was renowned for his work in the emergence of geomorphology and geography at the end of the 19th century. His career manifested through a Bachelor of Science at Harvard as well as gaining a Master's before becoming an instructor of geology and finally a professor at Harvard. Davis was known for his extensive research and field work throughout his life. Can you explain the significance of his early work in Argentina, New England and Pennsylvania? This research laid the foundations for his publication of The Rivers and Valleys of Pennsylvania and his theory of landscape evolution, the cycle of erosion. I've put together a short video to help explain this theory to you. The cycle of erosion defines landscapes into three stages, youth, maturity and old age, within an erosional cycle. Firstly, tectonic activity creates uplift and initiates the cycle. This produces mountainous young landscapes that are subsequently eroded sharply by torrential streams. Destructive processes have little impact at this stage. As the landscape becomes more thoroughly carved over time, the landscape becomes mature. There is also an abundance of deep, branching valleys. A state of late maturity is reached when the valleys open more broadly. Finally, a state of old age is achieved when the landscape reaches an extensive flat plain close to base or sea level. This is called a penny plain. Davis notes that hills may occasionally occur in the landscape due to irregularity in the bedrock. And am I correct in thinking this theory was influenced by Darwin? How can this be? Well, Davis used evolution to explain the change within landscapes, touching on the key principle of Darwin's work. The stages of his cycle also reflect the work of German biologist Haeckel's sequence of embryo evolution. But Davis's theory has been the focus of many criticisms, notably through the slope replacement theories from Walter Penck and late King's parallel retreat. Alternative theories were produced by differences in thinking, but also the countries of research. Penck argued that slopes were replaced by more gentle slopes, whereas King believed the gradient remained the same, but the slope retreated laterally. Although Davis's theory may not be applicable today, his theory set up an integral framework which helped progress geomorphic thought. He won multiple awards throughout his career, including the Penrose Medal and the RGS Gold Medal. Thank you, Ewan, for shedding some light onto the legacy of such an iconic figure within geography, William Morris Davis. And that's it from us tonight. We'll see you soon. Good night.